an important principle of meditating, getting the mind to settle down properly, is to develop a sense of balance. that your desire isn't so strong that it runs away with you, or so weak that you don't really care. Your effort isn't so strong that it wears you out. And again, it's not so weak that you don't accomplish anything, and so on down the line. You don't want to think too much, because that destroys your concentration. But it's also possible not to think enough. That's when you have a problem and you don't have to try to think it through and discover what's the cause of the problem. So we're looking for balance here. But it's important to realize that balance doesn't come automatically. Think of those old-fashioned scales. Before they reach balance, they have to tip first one way and then the other way and then back and forth and back and forth and then gradually tip less and less until they finally achieve balance. And so it's important that you realize from the very beginning that balance isn't going to be automatic and that you find yourself tipping one direction and then the other. That's going to be natural. The question is, or the skill lies in learning how to balance things out, tipping less and less and less. But first off, it's important to realize which direction are you tipping in. So it's good to take stock as you sit down and meditate. How is your mind right now? What does it need? Does it need encouragement? Does it need energizing? Or does it need to be calmed down? Is it too sluggish? In which case you have to do a little thinking, to stir it up a little bit. That reflection we had this afternoon about this night's sunset, this evening's sunset may have been the last one we're going to see. That big earthquake they keep warning about could happen. This new fault that just opened just to the north of us. You could suddenly do something strange. So the question is, if that were to happen, would you be ready to go? And for most of us, the answer is no. All this unfinished business, all these things we'd still like to do. Okay, what's the most important unfinished business? Getting your mind in shape. So that it's not your own enemy in the face of sudden events. Okay, work on your meditation. Sometimes that thought will help stir you up. And then look what you need to do to energize the mind even further, to keep it awake. You might decide that you're going to go through the parts of the body. Think about the different bones in your skeleton. What have you got? Just Imagine all the bones starting from the toes coming on up. Where are those bones? In other words, when you think about the bones in the toe, focus on the feeling in the toe. The bones in your feet, focus on the feelings in your feet, on up through the body. In other words, give the mind work to do. If you don't like the bones, just survey the breath energy in the different parts of your body. Just move around. Start, say, at your navel. Go up the front of the body, down the back, out the legs, and start again at the back of the neck. Go down the shoulders and out the arms, section by section. How does the body feel as you breathe in? How does it feel as you breathe out? And if you notice any sense of tension or tightness, allow it to relax. Guess this gives the mind work to do, so that it doesn't just start drifting off as it stays with the breath. If you find, though, that your problem is in the other direction, the mind is too active, 
just try to stay in one place and put all your activity in trying to protect that one place. If you find your thoughts wandering off, you ask yourself, why do I need to think about that now? Isn't it more important to get to work here? If you're worried about situations in the future, remind yourself that your best preparation for the future is to become mindful, alert, clear about where your mind is going. All the more reason to stay focused right here to develop those qualities. And then very, be very protective of that spot that you've chosen. And as you focus on that spot, allow that to become comfortable. This sense of comfort is important because it helps you stay. If there's a sense of dis-ease and blockage in the body, you're going to try to get out, run away from it. The mind doesn't see any advantage of staying here. But if you see that as you stay here, things begin to dissolve away, these patterns of tension grow less and less solid, less and less rigid. Just the fact of being in your body is going to feel a lot better, and you'll see immediate results. So the meditation is not simply aimed at results on off into the future, but it gives results right now. And if working on blockage in one part of the body, if you're focusing on that particular spot and it doesn't seem to work, focus on other parts of the body, because sometimes the blockage is caused, or a pain may be caused, or a tightness may be caused by a blockage someplace else. It's common, for instance, that a pain in your lower back is actually caused by a blockage in your upper back, or pain in your legs is caused by a blockage in your lower back or the base of the spine. Or pain in the right is caused by a corresponding tightness on the left. Something in front may be caused by something in back. So check around. And notice how you're talking to yourself as you do this. If you have a tendency to get really harsh and negative with yourself, remind yourself we're not here to be harsh and negative. Putting in Proper effort doesn't require that you hold a whip over yourself all the time. Again, it's part of balance, learning how to know when to use the carrot and when to use the stick. If you find yourself harsh and negative, remind yourself, okay, the fact that you're here meditating is good in and of itself. That the ideal approach is to simply to be matter of fact. The mind is wandering off again, just bring it back. Wandering off again, bring it back again. However many times it wanders off, just keep bringing it back and try to keep a good humor about the whole thing. This, combined with mindfulness, is probably your best guarantee of getting the mind into balance. So that when things aren't going the way you'd like them to, you don't get upset, you don't get flustered. You simply take it into account and see what you can do to balance it out. So try to think in ways that are encouraging. When you catch yourself wandering off, at least you caught yourself. For most people, they wander off and they never get caught. Their whole days, their whole lives have spent just wandering around aimlessly. But no control over the mind at all. Or just enough to get by. But each time you catch yourself and bring yourself back, you're strengthening your mindfulness, you're strengthening your alertness. That in and of itself is a good thing, it's an accomplishment. Save the stick for the times when you're really careless and lazy. And the stick, of course, is that recollection of death. Something we don't like to think about, but it's there in the background all the time. And it's not going to go away by our not thinking about it. 
to remind yourself, meditation is your best preparation for the time when you're going to die. Because at that point the mind is going to grasp at anything. You can't stand the body anymore, your awareness is... You're afraid of what's going to happen if you let go of the body, but you've got to let go of the body. It's what grabs at whatever comes up in the mind, and there it goes. So can you train the mind to be more composed, even in that kind of circumstance, when you're not flailing around? And the way to do that, of course, is learn how to sit with the breath, and learn how to be patient with the breath. Develop this quality of consistency. Develop your mindfulness. So keep in mind the fact that whatever comes up, you don't want to grab onto the things that are going to be harmful. If you're going to hold on to something, hold on to things that are skillful. The attitudes that will get you past whatever the difficulty. It doesn't get blown away. If you find yourself blown away by a little bit of pain or a little bit of problems, it's going to be really difficult when big pains and big problems come. So that's the stick to remind yourself you've got work to do. So achieving balance means sometimes Finding if you're leading to the left, okay, you've got to lean hard to the right. You're leading to the right, lean hard to the left. This is the principle they call negative feedback, which doesn't mean that you're being negative about yourself. But if you find yourself going too far in one direction, you learn to balance things out. All too often the mind gets into what's called positive feedback, which is not necessarily a positive thing. Positive feedback means you're going one direction, and you just keep tipping more and more and more in that direction. You find yourself angry, then you get angry at yourself for being angry, and then angry at yourself for being angry two times. That doesn't help. Or if you find yourself getting kind of lazy and blurred out, you say, well, this is kind of comfortable. I like this, and you just go for the lazy, blurred out state of mind. You've got to be able to step back from whatever the situation is in the mind and say, okay, in what direction are we out of balance and how can we put it back into balance? And you find yourself tipping to the left, tipping to the right, back and forth. It's normal, it's natural. But over time you develop the skill that the tipping gets less and less and less. It gets more and more subtle until finally you achieve balance. There's a sense of just right. The mind fits into the body like a glove. It stays with its object. With a sense of ease, a sense of belonging. You're feeling like you're here at home at last. And then all you do is simply maintain that balance. And you find that in the course of doing that, you develop a lot of good qualities of mind. This is a lot of where the skill comes in meditation. This is what the, the learning in the meditation amounts to. Learning how to lean left, lean right when you need to. So ultimately you get into balance and then learning how to stay in balance. Do you notice when you watch a person walking across a tightrope? There are times when the person is perfectly balanced, other times there'll be a slight slipping off of balance. But they've learned how to correct for it. That's how they don't fall. It's not that they never tip, but they know immediately how to tip in the other direction. Back and forth, back and forth, until they're balanced again. So even though there's going to be a lot of back and forth in the meditation, it aims toward the balance, and it maintains your balance. So don't get upset by it. Learn how to use it to bring the mind to that state where it feels really at home, settled, secure.
as we say in meditate in that chant. So it looks after itself with ease. It gains a sense of maturity, a sense of good humor. And confidence that comes from experience that you can deal with whatever comes up.